So let's talk about bad warm-ups and why I absolutely hate them. Hey there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And in this video, I want to present an alternative to bad warm-ups. Let's phrase it like that. So over the years I've trained historical martial arts, but also very many other kinds of sports as well. I've encountered numerous bad warm-ups that just waste time, that don't fulfill their purpose and certainly I felt many bad warm-ups as well. But hopefully I got rid of them, rid of the bad warm-ups. And then with this video I want to give you a few principles at hand with which you'll probably can lead some better warm-ups as well. Okay, so first up what is a warm-up? Well, it consists out of three basic components that are quite essential. And that, that is, it prepares you for a task at hand, physically and mentally. So these are the three components. It's very important to keep the task at hand in mind. So for us in historical fencing, that is, that is probably some drilling, some training, could be free fencing, could be sparring, could be also like a tournament fight, right? And depending on what you're doing after the warm-up, well, your warm-up should change because it should be specific to the activity that you are warming up for. All right, so keep that in mind. Next, it should prepare you physically and mentally. Okay, so what do I mean by physically? Well, you need to prepare all the muscles involved in the task at hand for the task and the intensity that you're going to move in. So for example, in a tournament fight, you will need all the muscles in your, mus uh, in your basically in your body and you need to warm them up appropriately. So you need some, uh, some cardiovascular exercises, you need some, uh, some exercises for, for the arms, for the feet, for the torso. And our body is very specific in the way that it moves. So for example, a general thing for all our training should be that it should be time efficient. That's also really, really interesting. So for example, while just jogging for a warm up or a running exercise might get the blood flowing and that it does quite well and it has low injury risk and all, all stuff like that. But it doesn't really get your arms going. It doesn't really get your mind going. So it is not the, the most time efficient thing that you could do to prepare you for a tournament fight, for example. Because that's the other stuff, thing. You, in an ideal world, want to prepare you with a warm up mentally and physically at the same time. Okay? So. That's usually why I got rid of most warm-up games or fitness exercises that don't really relate to the stuff I am going to do after the warm-up. So what do I mean by that? Especially with the fitness exercises, well, I think as a warm-up you should get rid of them at all, actually. Because if you want to enhance the fitness of yourself and your uh, participants in your training, then that should be its own thing basically. I don't think doing I don't think doing it at the start of the training is very beneficial because well while we are drilling sparring we need like all the motor control all the skills that we have at full capacity and going like hard fitness training well that will just exhaust you right you'll have a hard time getting the most out of the training time after it. So it doesn't really prepare you in that case anymore. It might make you fitter in the long run, but well, you could still just go uh, and do it after the training or after the, the main part of the training or even better at a separate training time. So fitness training to complement your fencing training, that's great, right? And we should always make the most out of the resources that are available to us. So, for example, if we have partners to train with, you generally want to use these partners. And fitness training is something that you can do on your own quite easily. All right, if you can motivate yourself, that is of course. All right, so 
What do I do instead? Well, you can design a couple of specific games with the task at hand in mind. So let's get back to, to like tournament preparation. I, for example, go for like some, some light bouts, uh, even with foam wasters or pool noodles or something like that, because that will naturally warm you up because you are still like getting in that fighting mode. You can start slower, of course, and then um, can, uh, can increase the intensity step by step. So that is a ramping up, warm up exercise in there as well but it also gets you fit mentally. It gets you in the right mindset. Um, it goes for the right movements that you're going to need afterwards. So it's uh, by definition, as you're doing the same movements that you're going to do afterwards, it will warm up the correct muscles. And so it's, I think, a way more efficient use of your time. Okay, and also of your fitness and stuff, right? Because, like I said, you don't want to exhaust yourself just without any sense and meaning. You can, of course, uh, also do like uh, fully gear up and do some light bouts or something like that to warm up. That's uh, totally fine as well. And I usually start with like pool noodles or foam swords and then I, uh, I go up, put my training gear on, get a little, a couple of bouts, then, um, then get the, uh, the pulse down just a bit and then I'm ready to fight, for example. So, but that's just me. Um, for training, for drilling, so if you're just like your usual week class, well, I'd suggest that just get the participants uh, comfortable. So what we are usually doing is like some very short, light dynamic stretching just to get mentally ready for the class at hand, but no longer than like five minutes or something like that. And then just start with the drills, right? You can go for lower intensity at first and then ramp it up afterwards. So the drills in itself um, can be like choreography drills, could be semi-open, so some kind of coaching exercises. This could be part of the warm-up in itself. Keep it specific. You want to do in your fencing class as much fencing and fencing related stuff as possible. Throwing gloves through the air and catching them looks fun on camera, but like our system, our, uh, our brain doesn't work that way, right? We don't train our reaction time in fencing by reacting some other stuff. It's very specific to the inputs that we're going to see when we're actually fighting. Okay, so keep it specific. Keep it, keep it fun and light. Keep it, uh, remember that it needs to be time efficient, that it needs to prepare you mentally and physically, and it always needs to relate to the task at hand. So if you're going for warming up for a marathon, doing push-ups, that's not the best warm-up. All right, so I hope this was useful to you. Uh, go for a, a couple of better warm-ups because I will judge any class that I'll take, any, any workshop that I take on the warm-up because it's the first impression that I get and I'm lazy just like that and I'll judge you on my first impression. So take care and bye-bye.